everybody, Realm Builder Guy is back, and welcome to a new guide here for Crusader Kings 3. Um, before I get into the guide itself, I want to thank everybody that's been liking, commenting, and subscribing. It means a lot to me. The growth on the channel has been absolutely fantastic. And if you don't mind, please hit that like button here too. It'll help the channel. And subscribe as well to not miss any great Crusader Kings or other content that will come. There's going to be more than just CK3 here on the channel in the future. Uh, it's just a matter of time right now, especially with a baby on the way. So, um, today's guide, as you could tell from the title because you clicked on the dang thing, <laughs> I'm going to be talking to you about marriage and uh, love. and Well, okay, maybe not love, but definitely marriage. And as an example here, to kind of showcase some of these things, I am coming from uh, my current Let's Play here on Crusader Kings 3 here on YouTube with Sviatopolk and the Rurikid Rus. If you want to find out more about that, there will be a card at some point here at the top, if I can remember after about a minute and write that down very smoothly and professionally. Um, uh, you can go check that out as well. So... This guide is going to be a lot more for players that are a little bit newer to the game, uh, that maybe haven't played, you know, 3,000 hours of CK2 or 500 hours of CK3 already that are maybe just getting into it um, and trying to, to learn a little bit more and, and what all the options are because... Marriage is very, very important, especially right now in the current state of CK3 when your overall options, you know, it aren't as uh, far reaching as they were at the end with CK2 with a gazillion and a half uh, DLCs available. So I want to get into marriage because it's very, very important. And there, there are just a lot of things for new players to keep in mind. And what things can impact marriage uh, or betrothals, what to kind of look for in them, and what you can do to maybe sway some things your way or the other. So let's uh, take this now one of Sviatopolk's sons who's not yet betrothed, and uh, we will go through this little exercise. All right, so uh, we've got... Uh, Izaslav, Izaslav, here, uh, looking, he's 15, gonna, gonna have to find the kid a, a wife, because at 16 they come of age, and that's when they officially get married, he's 15 now, it's time that the kid find someone, so, what are some of the things you have to consider? Well, first of all, uh, one of the main things you should consider, of course, is you, you kind of want to avoid inbred um now what that happens if we see if we can have anybody in here that's from that's potentially inbred uh this one is not but uh, there are a few here if they would be of the same dynasty you would get a little uh, icon down here none of these have it that would say that there's a chance that they could become inbred uh it's unlikely to happen in the first generation uh and for those of you that are following this let's play series you know that i decided to ignore the little inbred warning once because i needed to get my son married away and uh, there was just nobody there we were still count level and that does have an impact now that my ruler is at a different level um it it kind of makes things a little bit easier so we had to look a little bit closer to home but again first generation unlikely to get uh, in, you know, negative inheritable traits, um, like I don't even know what they could be, but these are all the negative inheritable traits are always in red. Green ones are the positive ones, and obviously inbred being the worst one amongst them. If you continue to try to, let's just say, keep the bloodline close, as it were in a Lannister kind of way, then uh, that the chance of that uh, occurring is much, much higher. So what are some of the things you need to keep in mind that can impact uh, potential betrothals? So first of all, you want to look at things 
you know, this is a son, so obviously I'm not going to do a matrilineal marriage. Matrilineal marriage is important if you have daughters, uh, especially if you almost only have daughters. If you click on that, that means the titles, the family, the inheritance, and so on gets comes under your house and your family and your dynasty and not the other way around. Uh, now, it will limit. There are plenty of houses, dynasties, rulers who will not allow, or do not want their sons to marry a daughter where the daughter basically has the control. So that's something to keep in mind. If you have, um, you know, one or two daughters, it wouldn't be bad to have a matrilineal marriage mixed in there or all of them. If you have a very large family, say you've got three or four sons and five or six daughters, you know, I tend to, after maybe one or two matrilineal marriages in the beginning, after a while, pick a couple where it's more about alliances and inheritance, possibly, but alliances predominantly. Because obviously, if it's not matrilineal, you're not going to inherit any claims, but you do get the alliance. Now, you've got potential alliances here that kind of show who's who's up for grabs, so to speak. Um and the alliances tend to go according to your rank. Uh, now, our rank right now is a duke level rank, so we're probably not going to get a lot of alliances with king level characters, uh, but dukes and counts for sure. Now, you can also get baronial alliances. I would not do that because you don't really get any advantages of it. Alliance is the main thing you want out of an alliance is someone who will support you in the event of a war. Now, pick who you're going to marry them off to an alliance very carefully. Um, you can check and see where they are, what's the power status in that family, uh, and are they at war, you know, are they, you know, protected by a powerful liege, that kind of stuff, because you don't want to constantly be called into attacking wars, because if you decline a war, it will hurt you in opinion as well. Uh, and defensive wars uh, hurt you a lot. So just keep that in mind when you're looking for alliances. Now here is one. Uh, in Luki, we would get the alliance. You can see uh, Izaslav gets no prestige out of this, and she gets 600. So obviously that means we're basically marrying down. Uh, now you've got a ton of filters you can go through. You can go through alliance power. And it shows you who you can be aligned to. Uh, and it tends to show the most powerful ones first. And then, obviously, it goes down after that. You can also look at prestige gain. What will give you the most prestige? Uh, this one here should be inbred. There you see it. Um, you can see it's related. There's a risk of children being inbred. So you saw that. But you can still get married. It's not saying you can't. Um, so there are a ton of filter options there. Uh, here, relevance, I tend to look at alliance power and kind of scroll from there. You can see here's one from Polotsk. Uh, he will accept that, so fantastic. Uh, it's good. Everybody gets 500 prestige. They are a, a similar power to our house, so we would get a very strong ally there. Now, what can also have a negative effect? Well, faith. Faith is the big one. Culture has virtually no impact. You can see kind of the culture right here. And then here is the faith. Now, uh, if we look at her real quick, uh, look at accept, you can see that there is a minus 10 in faith. Now, we are Orthodox, but Christian. Uh, and they are insular Christian. So it's still Christian, so it's related, but it's different. Different gives you a minus 10. If you are considered an astray or a hostile um, faith, then it's a minus 25 modifier. If they consider your faith evil, it's minus 1,000, and you basically don't have a chance. The other thing is, of course, if you're trying to get a marriage with uh, a culture that has polygamy, as a kind of a doctrine for marriage and you are not or vice versa that's also a minus thousand which basically means it ain't gonna happen now the other thing that can happen of course is rank we just scroll out here let's just find a kingdom let's go to king of sweden does he have any children's here yes he has a daughter 
who is betrothed, of course. Let's find someone who does not have a betrothed daughter. Him, right here, Hungary. Let's marry her off to our son. And you can see minus 48. So what are the debuffs, so to speak, here? We're marrying down minus 40. Um, they're a king. We're a duke. They don't like that. We also have too many alliances. This one, I can't find a hard number. So, you know, that's that's kind of a, a bummer to not be able to see that. But the key thing here is the minus 40 that they are marrying down. And then they also have a different faith, even though they're Christian. Minus 10. So with all the other ones, it's a minus 40. It's not going to happen. You need at least a plus one to get a marriage. So uh, it's either a minus 30 or a minus 40. 40 on the rank difference depending on what uh what level it is and that's per rank so if you're a count trying to marry a king you're gonna get a minus 80 uh so that's just not gonna happen um then the other things that can have a negativity behind it of course um you know like i showed you were alliances there so you know, the, those are all the ones that can be negative. So what are some of the other things you want to keep an eye on? Now, if you're going to do claims, let's take a look at her. She has a pressed claim for the county of Luki. Now, this is important because pressed claims get passed on to the children as unpressed claims, but they can then declare war for these claims if it's an unpressed claim it basically ends with you so that's in general something to keep in mind if you have an unpressed claim you may want to try to take that opportunity as a casus belli for a war uh, otherwise it goes away when you go away so keep that in mind uh, then we're looking at things that are important, of course. Now, we're going to look at age first. He's 15. We want a partner that's not way older. I mean, this one's not bad. She's 26, and she has good health. Fertility goes down with age for women dramatically. In fact, as of 46, they can no longer have children. Uh, it's a minus, it's a 33% chance at 45, 41 to 45. Uh, obviously, the highest is here in kind of this, this young area. Now, you can see she has a fine health. She has good health, good health, good health. So you kind of want to go with someone that has good health. Uh, then you can see the different traits that they have. Arrogant, calm, sadistic. Okay. Sadistic is maybe a little bit of a negative one, but overall, it's not bad. She also has good learning and good diplomacy, or an average, and then average intrigue, it's, and she's 17. You get a good alliance and a claim. She would really be nearly perfect. Um, you want to stay away from a lot of the ones that have the red traits, the negative ones. You also want to stay away honestly, from chaste, any type of traits that reduce fertility are an issue because one of the main things in Crusader Kings is, of course, you need to produce an heir. Um, the other thing is these traits are congenital, so they can be inherited by the next generation. I'm trying to see if we can find this one's wheezing, so that's a health issue. Um, let's see if we can find anything here. Oh, there we go. Uh, here, quick. This is congenital. This is fantastic. It gives you a plus one to diplomacy, martial stewardship, intrigue, and learning, and a lifestyle experience of plus 10%. That's a fantastic one. So wherever you can find these green traits, that's something you want to go for. Uh, the other one, of course, is anything that gives a bonus to fertility is something you want to go for as well. Now, this one She's older, if she was younger, even without alliances, if this was maybe my youngest son, if I had five kids, sons ahead of him, I maybe just go with this one because he's somewhere in the line of secession. I may land him at some point as a count. It gets him a wife, it produces children, it keeps the house going. But other than that, you know, this isn't really something I would be going for. Alliances are always things that are the first ones I look at. Now, if you want to um, get rid of certain things, like for instance here, you can do fertile or unfertile. You just click on this little 
filter here, you can pick a maximum age. So he's 15, so I'd probably go with 25. Age difference, maybe five years. Adult, uh, yeah, we do want her to be an adult. Fertile, of course, health. We want her to be healthy. Religion, let's add Christianity to that. We don't care about culture. Traits, we can look at inheritable traits. You know, congenital, non-inheritable. Uh, good ones, at least. Alliances, all right. We can just have ones with alliance. Prestige, with a gain. There's nobody that gives us a gain that ticks all these boxes. So that's, and then we can do claim. Let's do any claim, and really, she's it. But that's how you can filter down the different levels of marriage. Um, now we can send this proposal. What does this do? We have a vastly inferior um, ally who's only 17, but she has pressed claims, so it may not be a bad one. Um, if we just reset this to defaults and look at who would be a very good one, um, I would then go with Alliance Power. Scroll to the top. Now she's nine. Now obviously he's fifteen. He it would take another seven years before they would get married, but this is a very strong alliance because this is a very strong person to get married to. But anyway. Um now a few other things. Now, if you have someone who is maybe not inclined to want to agree to your marriage, how can you change that? Well, first of all. If it's close, if it's say within, I'd say within 30 to 40, an opinion, if that's a big issue, then sway them and just give it some time. Now, ideally you would start maybe when this guy is about 12 and you can kind of pick a target country that has a few daughters that you'd like to ally with. Then you start swaying them a little bit earlier, and then there's more likely that they will get married. The other thing, of course, is getting a hook. Uh, getting a hook, strong or weak, gives you either 100 or 200 bonus. So there's more likely, if you have a hook on someone, that they're going to agree to a betrothal or a marriage. Now, there is one special rule here for some of the cultures that have a polygamous marriage doctrine. Um, you actually are expected to have multiple spouses. Uh, and with the 1.1 patch, they uh, kind of tweaked that a little bit. And basically, if you don't, if you have less than the expected spouses, you get a minus 0 0.5 piety per month if below. Now, what are those levels of expected spouses? If you're on account, they expect you to have one spouse. So if you have one spouse, you're solid. Duke, two. King, three. Emperor, four. So just keep that in mind. Most people now in the beginning don't tend to play in a king level. Duke seems to be a pretty comfortable one. So make sure you get your two wives and you're good to go. I mean, you can slot up even further if that's available. And then you don't have to ever worry about it. But if you have a polygamous marriage doctrine, that is something you need to keep in mind that if you have less than the expected spouses, that will cost you piety. So anyway, that's basically everything you need to know uh, to keep in mind when you are going to look for marriages, be that for yourself or for your children. Um, honestly, for yourself or for your children, especially the higher age class children or your strongest trait and ability children, uh, you're kind of looking for the same stuff. You're looking for good alliances. If they have claims, that's even better. Um, and then, of course, traits and attributes after that. Um, so I hope this helped. If it did, don't forget to hit that like button. Subscribe if you're new to not miss any content here on the channel. And until next time, I am Realm Builder Guy, and I will talk to you soon.